the Holy and Great Council of the Orthodox Church. For over 60 years, only an idea and almost a dream. Countless people labored and prayed for the convening of such a council. For decades, patriarchs and metropolitans, priests and deacons, men and women, initiated a process that would eventually lead to the moment when the world would finally witness the Orthodox Church, not as a fragmented federation of local churches, but as the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church of Christ. On June 20th of this year, on the great feast of Pentecost, His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew convened the Holy and Great Council. And just as he has done for the past 25 years as Ecumenical Patriarch, he provided the Orthodox Church with yet another chance to become more visible and more accessible to the wider world. For approximately 10 days, the Orthodox Church presented a message of unity, hope, and love. It achieved this by bringing together hundreds of hierarchs from all corners of the world, from the north and the south, from the east and the west. The hierarchs discussed matters of pastoral concern, internal church administration, and the overall mission of the church in and for the world. The Council was an occasion for unprecedented cooperation between clergy, monastics, and laity, men and women, theologians, scholars, experts, as well as students, seminarians, and stewards. The Council not only renewed our conciliar conscience, it also manifested the age-old truth that our common faith in Christ strengthens the bonds of our unity while also encouraging greater expressions of creativity and diversity. After decades of planning, the local Orocephalus Orthodox churches recognized that the only way to celebrate their common faith and their particular gifts granted by the Holy Spirit was by gathering as a council. Therefore, together with the Ecumenical Patriarch and his delegation, other primates and their delegations gathered in Crete, the Patriarchates of Alexandria and Jerusalem, the Churches of Serbia, Romania, Cyprus, Greece, Poland, Albania, and the Czech lands and Slovakia. All of these answered God's call to unity and were present. And while four local churches, Antioch, Russia, Bulgaria, and Georgia, did not attend the Council, they did not object to the Council's nature or purpose. And while they may not have been present at the Council, they are still able to receive the Council's decisions. In spite of the absence of a few churches, the very fact that so many hierarchs were of one mind, given so many ethnic, racial, and cultural differences between them, is a sign that the Council was truly guided by the Holy Spirit. As Archbishop Rostislav of the Czech lands and Slovakia joyfully declared in his keynote address, even though bishops gathering were of various ethnic backgrounds, they were all members of the one Orthodox people. This visible manifestation of the Orthodox family, of the body of Christ, was much more than a conference, a synaxis, or a meeting in Crete. It was a council, a synodos, which literally means walking together on the same road. And as members of this synodos, those present agreed to walk together in a common direction toward Christ our God. This was certainly a difficult task. And while meetings, plans, 
and committees were all necessary to organize the Council, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit were absolute necessities for realizing the Council. The hierarchs understood that if they were ever to achieve a more profound dimension of communion among themselves, they first had to enter into holy communion with God. They therefore concelebrated the Divine Liturgy each and every day. Indeed, the Council officially began its work with the concelebration of the Divine Liturgia by the primates on the Great Feast of Pentecost at the historical Metropolitan Church of St. Minas in Iraklion. And the Council concluded its work with another concelebration of the primates on the Sunday of All Saints at the Church of Saints Peter and Paul in Chania. We can therefore rest assured that this sacramental unity truly informed the work of the Council and it transfigured its work into an open invitation to the world to come and see, to come and see exactly how good it is for brothers and sisters to be in each other's presence. Over the course of 10 days, 16 intensive sessions in countless working groups for drafting, editing, and revision, the hierarchs deliberated on six major issues. The mission of the church in the world, the orthodox diaspora, autonomy and the means by which it is granted, the importance of fasting and its observance today, relations of the Orthodox Church with the rest of the Christian world, and the sacrament of marriage and its impediments. Their actual decisions will become available for all of us to study, to receive, and to implement in our parish, family, and personal lives. Indeed, this process of reception is part and parcel of the conciliar journey. We are indeed very blessed to be living at this time, for we are already witnessing and experiencing the transformative power of community and conciliarity in new and dynamic ways. His All Holiness Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew did not convene the Holy and Great Council for personal or ideological reasons. He convened the Council because, as he observed in his keynote address, the Church does not exist for itself. She exists for the world, for the salvation of the world. The Holy and Great Council of the Orthodox Church will be studied by historians and theologians for generations. What they will discover, and what the primates and hierarchs discovered at the Council, is that we are the Council, for we are the Church. Given this reality then, we are not only called by God to unity, we are also called to respond with charity and love.